Welcome back everyone, this is Shadow Dragon. So we're going to resume with this tutorial and the topic for this video is going to be loops and jump instructions. Now while there are branch instructions, those are going to be those are going to be covered later. All right, so we have three types of jump instructions and I'm only going to go predominantly I'm going to go over predominantly two of them. I'm going to have jump J JR, which is a relative jump, and a jaw. Now, I'm going to go over jaw a little bit later because this goes with the with the RA uh, register, and so we're just going to skip that for now. So the first one we're going to go with is the the relative jump, just because it's kind of new, different, and it is a way to make loops. So now. The relative jump instruction is has a relative jump to line A. That's not very descriptive, and so I will explain how it goes. A relative jump will take whatever line number you are, add whatever this value is, and this is this can either be a register or a constant, and whatever the sum of that is, that's the next line to be executed. So for example, if I do JR5, it's going to skip 5 or add 9 to 5. One, two, three, four, five, and it'll execute right there. Additionally, if I do negative five, it'll go back five. One, two, three, four, five, and it should execute right here. And so a relative jump can be used for this purpose. So we're going to go on ahead and do something with this. So let's just do, so we have the set lever open. Let's just turn our grow light on. Grow light on based on lever state. All right. One, two, three, four, five. So this is what's going to be executed. Uh, let's see here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to load to lever state from our lever and we're going to get our setting. And so this is this should complete the loop. So what this would allow the code to do is it's going to read the lever state, turn on the grow light based on the lever state. Uh, this is kind of inconsequential to this. Come down here and relative jump 5. So it should come right back and resume doing this lever state control. So let's give this a go. So as soon as we export, you see that it turns on the grow light. So if I turn this off, my grow light turns off. So that's awesome. So now you see that I no longer have to pick up my chip and put it back. But now let me go over the downsides with the relative jump. Because of the nature of the relative jump, when you add more logic here, so let's just add some spaces, as you can see, if I do this, my relative jump is now at 12. So going back 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 means I'm landing on 7. So because of this, I'm no longer reading the lever state. So let's export it and show that off. So let's flip the lever on. And you can see my grow light never turns back on. And so the definite disadvantage of using a loop with the relative jump is that you will you need to come back and be absolutely careful about adjusting these values. So now that I'm at five, so I need to go 12, minus, I believe that's seven, but let's just do eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I change that to eight, it's going to fix itself and I'll be able to turn the grow light on. So the relative jump can allow you to make small loops and it'll be useful later on so I'm going over this because branching instructions later for relative branching will do the same thing. This is an unconditional jump. So now let's go to the jump instruction. Now the jump instruction jumps to line A. So it jumps exactly to the line that you tell it to. So in this case if I tell it to jump to line 5 it'll complete the loop by coming back up here. So let's see that in action. Export, turn my light on, lever on, 
my grow light comes on. It's perfect. And as you can see, the advantage of an absolute jump is I can add extra space here. Export it. And you will see that I continue to operate my lever. But now, the problem with that would be when you do alias and defines, uh, the way I have this, this loop here, I'm jumping up to here to make sure I get that. But if I needed to add more logic here that I did not want to execute from this loop, I'd have to come back and adjust the number for this jump instruction. So then the next thing that I would need to do is to do a label. And this is typically what you start to see in programming where you put a label. So to make a jump label, all you do is type a string, set of strings or numbers, does not matter. No special characters, though. That will mess it up. The only special character you're allowed is a colon. And you can see that changes this line to purple. Uh, let's delete those numbers. So now if I do a jump to main, you'll see this will turn purple if you have a valid jump register. If there is not a valid jump register, you'll see that that jump label will turn red and you'll also get an error on the code. This is case sensitive. So if I put capital M AIN for my, for my uh, register label, this is also going to be invalid. So let's correct this. And so what happens here is now I have a I'm going to have a main and a jump that comes across. So when I export this, once again, my lever works to control my grow light exactly as I expected it to. And the definite advantage of making sure that you have a jump label and a jump to a main label is now, if I need to add more aliases, like alias lock state R1, or we need to define timer on uh, five, let's do five seconds, define timer off two, uh, two seconds. You can see that I can add extra aliases, more defines. Maybe I can even initialize states, you know, move to lock state. We want to move it to one. And it doesn't matter how much I move my, my, uh, my jump label. it will keep the rest of the code steady. And if I want to add more logic in the main, in this loop, main loop, I can keep doing that. These two are synced up together. So until I relocate this main, it will capture everything before that. And so this is how you make a loop. And it is beneficial that you always have a loop in your program because otherwise it'll execute one time. But now, as you see here, because of this jumping over here to come back to main, anything past this jump is not going to get executed. So this, this line down here, does not execute at all. Because it's going to come down and immediately jump right back up here. All right. So now that we have this, let me delete that. Don't need, I won't need that. All right, so this covers our relative jumps. This covers our normal jumps. And to review, relative jump, we'll take whatever line number that relative jump is at, add whatever this number is, and wherever that lands on, so in this case, 13 minus 5 is 8, that means it'll come up to here. Uh, just. Just a nice small note, if you do a relative jump to zero, you basically get a, this program stuck as it is, because 13 plus zero is 13, so you're just going to be stuck infinitely here. And then normal jumps will jump, jump instructions will basically go to line number exactly what this integer is. And this can be a register, an integer, or a jump label. To make a jump label, you just need to have you just need to have a string of characters 
and or numbers and put a colon at the end and you create a jump label. You can still you can still put comments but it seems to kind of mess up the way this works. So I try not to put comments after a jump label because for some reason it seems to break that. I'm not entirely sure why. Alrighty. That covers making loops with jump instructions and jump labels. Uh, let's see. Next time it's going to be yields and sleeps. So see you then.